What's up guys, Sean Murray, Pro Wakeboarder. This is my story. Start out on the scurfer. It's what a wakeboard originally was. It's kind of a mini surfboard with foot straps, and you go scurfing behind the boat. And I uh, moved to St. Louis, Missouri, and was able to like ski every day because we were um, blessed to move right onto a lake, so we were always out in the water. Time came for college. Moved down to Florida and had the opportunity to go try it at a, at a local contest. And I never really competed before and did pretty well. And the, the editor of Wakeboard Magazine came up and said, hey, you should give this a shot, and kind of caught my attention. So I asked my dad if I could take a semester off school, and he said, you can as long as you reach these goals. And if you don't, you get right back into school, but if you do, take another semester off, see how it goes. And so I gave it a shot, and things went better than I ever imagined. I haven't come back to school yet, um, but it's, it's been an incredible ride so far. I had to really go out and work for it at first. Um, not that I don't work for it now, but uh, I went and traveled to boat shows on my own dime so that I could just get my face out there. I lived with this guy, Dean Lavelle, and he was a big name on the sport of wakeboarding. And if you were involved in the mid-90s, you knew his name. And so then the life started happening. I was traveling everywhere. Uh, I was picking up sponsors. I was competing. I was, I was winning contests um, and, and things have just been unreal. You know, my faith, I grew up in church and I knew what was right and I knew what I should be doing, but a lot of times I'd find reasons to push that aside. I don't know if I could, if I could pinpoint my, we'll say, spiritual awakening I don't know if it can pinpoint that to an injury, um, but it was definitely during a, a period of recovery. It was probably six to eight months after I had totally blew apart my knee, ACL, MCL, PCL meniscus, and so it was a long, long road to recovery for me. But I was, I was kind of battling God a little bit because I was trying to justify what I wanted to do. I was trying to find a reason why what I'd been taught my whole life growing up in church wasn't the way I was taught. Because as soon as I could do that, as soon as I could disprove God, then I wasn't accountable and I could do what I wanted. I tried hard. Um, and I'd have discussions with friends and some were real about it. Some would just shove scripture back in my face, um, but I wanted real discussions, and so it kind of made me even more upset with the church, it made me even more upset with religion and you know, that kind of stuff. I, I wanted to connect with someone, and I didn't get much of that. So I was involved with, with things that um, I knew weren't right, and I knew were keeping me from having an open line of communication with God, but I still felt like no matter how far I walked away from, from my spiritual home, no matter how far I went away, I always felt like I, I could turn around and I could see a little light on in a house. Just, you know, kind of God sitting there waiting for me to, to come home. I played guitar since high school and never anything too serious, but my, uh, my buddy who played guitar at my church, I, I was still going to church all the while. So my, my buddy who was at church said, hey, come to my office, try it out. 
you know, see if you want to play with us. And, and so I ended up playing at church while I was still involved in these things that I knew weren't right. And it was probably like a couple months into doing this. I was standing up there realizing that I, I couldn't get away from God because it was, he, he's just, it's there in my face. I just know it. I know it deep within my heart. And, and I decided then and there while I was up on the stage that I was, I was going to stop what I was doing. I was going to go home and throw away the things I needed to throw away and, and put the things away that I, I needed to get away from. And so that day, it was February 2004. And I completely walked away from those things. Inst instantly. And um, I also decided that I was going to read the Bible front to back. I don't care how long it takes, I'm just going to read a couple pages a day. And it took me almost two years, and I got through it. Got to the end, and I started it again. So I'm still reading. And I feel like that's been a huge anchor for me. I feel like that keeps me focused, it keeps things in perspective. Like I said, I grew up going to church. we go to summer camps, winter camps. And I remember at a certain winter camp when it finally, it hit me really hard what Jesus had done for me. You know, the, him dying on the cross and the suffering that he went through. And it, it brought me to tears. And I remember everybody had left this, this, uh, the service at the winter camp and I and I just it brought me to tears and um, it took me a while but I, I just really took uh, I I embraced what he had done for me and then later through through my years of wakeboarding I like I said I, I tried to find reasons um, to to disbelieve that uh, to walk away from that um, but I, I couldn't Salvation deals with eternity, and for us to even fathom how long that is, we can't even begin to comprehend it. To not be able to spend that with God is un unfathomable, totally unfathomable. So for me, I would give up everything, all the success I've had in wakeboarding for one person to have a life in eternity with God through his salvation with Jesus Christ.